When the company I worked for was founded, technology looked like this. Travelport is a $2 billion travel commerce platform. We're 45 years old. Many of our employees are celebrating 20, 30, 40 year work anniversaries. And yet we've been able to build an innovation program based on lean startup and design thinking, essentially helping employees across our organization function like startups. So we get asked a lot, how are you doing this at such a big company with so many barriers to innovation? The first thing we've learned, you have to invite people to play. There's this great infographic by Toggle that sort of breaks down the basic roles of a tech company. The point for me aren't the specific stereotypes, although they're great and hilarious. Uh, the point is we as humans do this, and especially in very large organizations, we create these very clear lines around where our place is in a company and where it's not. And while this is largely out of necessity, it can become problematic if we start to believe innovation only happens here or is only relevant for this guy. I don't care how smart or hardworking this guy is, he can't innovate by himself. We have to be really intentional about pulling people in to test and experiment new ideas. Let people learn by doing. This is my niece, Joy. Joy has what Sheryl Sandberg would call early leadership skills. Uh, she recently had a party where the kids were playing in these fountains. Every few minutes, the fountains die down, and you have to push this button to turn them back on. Joy spent her entire party manning this button. If another kid tried to push it, she'd run over and make sure it was done the way she wanted. It was hilarious to watch. It was also a bit too reminiscent of how I'm sure I acted when I first started sharing Lean Startup across our organization. It can be so tempting to want to control things, especially if you're sharing with people who aren't used to thinking iteratively or engaging with customers. I've learned I have to let go, let people do a first pass that looks like this. Way too many post-it notes, no rhyme or reason to the color coding. Uh, this is what builds a sense of ownership and a, a bias towards action, which is so much more important than which color post it was used at the end of the day. You can cheat the system, I definitely do. Use static cling or magnetic post-it so you can move them around more easily. We give people very, very fat Sharpies so they're sort of forced to be concise about their ideas. <laughs> I do get asked a lot, you know, these folks aren't developers, they're not designers, they're not even product people. Are you really asking them to prototype and interview customers? Yes. Um, Doing is how people internalize these processes. It, what's, it is what creates change. Talk about waste a lot. So I come from a land where the business plan is still a thing. People spend weeks and months creating very detailed plans and projections about their new business ideas. And so we spend a lot of time looking honestly at the realities of waste. We look at studies like this one, uh, which showed that over 60% of product features are never or rarely used. And we talk about this in terms of their time, their energy, their talent. And then we tell stories. We tell stories about big multi-million dollar flops like HP's touchpad. We tell stories about products our company has invested in only to find out our customers could care less. And this is when people really start leaning in. This is when they become bought into the fact that there has to be a better way to approach this stuff. And I think the Lean Startup is so powerful in these moments because it's what frees people from this notion that they have to figure out all the unknowns ahead of time and instead just ask them to look honestly at what they don't know. Last thing, community is magic. Uh, we see this all the time in real life and in geeky science fiction, which I'm an unashamed fan of. If you're doing something new or something hard, having people with you makes all the difference. We actually have our teams get together every week to set and report on goals. They get really explicit about what they're trying to learn, what success looks like, and they'll call bullshit on each other, which is really great and really powerful. And then we set aside time to sit in the results of these meetings with each other. Uh, so we'll celebrate with the teams that uh, really crushed it that week. This is supposed to be a video of us all laughing together. Uh, we'll take a fail shot with teams who you know, didn't get back the result they were expecting or didn't get done what they wanted to. So we foster this in person and also through online channels like Slack or Yammer. Whatever this looks like for you, connecting people around you know, this new way of thinking and doing and growing a business is perhaps the most important aspect to this whole entrepreneurial thing. So I'd love to hear how you all are using Lean Startup or other entrepreneurial tools in your organizations. 
It is an uphill venture for sure, but a rewarding one and a really powerful one as well. Thanks.